When you see these spectacular shapes and colors, it's hard to believe that blown glass comes from this bland, lumpy stuff. This is silica, a natural material derived from sand, mixed with thinners and stabilizers such as potassium and limestone. The glass blower recycles any leftover colorless glass, then loads the mix into the melting furnace. After 12 hours at fusion temperature, 1200 degrees Celsius, the raw material transforms into colorless liquid glass. The glass blower uses a blowpipe, a long steel tube with a ring or a pear-shaped end, to collect what's called a gather, a glob of this red-hot molten material. To color the gather, she quickly rolls it in finely ground colored glass. At this stage, the glass is honey-like in consistency, though it's cooling and thickening by the second. She fuses the color layer by reheating the glass for a few seconds in a smaller furnace called a glory hole. Next, she rolls the glass against a ladle-shaped block to form a starting shape for blowing. A gentle blow or two bulges it into a hollow bubble. By now, the cooling glass has thickened to the consistency of caramel, making it more controllable and shapeable. The glass blower stretches and shapes the glass with different blocks and hand tools. The glass is like hardened caramel now and holds its final shape. She scores the glass where it meets the blowpipe, then cools it further with compressed air. On the opposite end of the glass, with a bit of hot glass, she attaches a solid metal maneuvering rod called a pontil. Then she applies a single drop of cold water on the score line to crack and break the glass off the blowpipe. Using another pontil, she plugs the resulting hole with hot glass. Then it's back to the melting furnace to attach a gather. It's critical to always rotate the glass so that it doesn't droop and become lopsided. The glass blower shapes this gather not with a block, but by hand. She protects herself from the intense heat by using a thick stack of soggy newspapers. Using an ordinary pair of scissors, she forms ridges. Then she twists the ridges to spiral them. She cools and hardens the finished design using compressed air. Then it's a quick blast in the glory hole to equalize the temperature throughout the piece. This blown glass lemon reamer has taken all of eight minutes to make. Now it goes into an electric kiln for a slow 12-hour cool down to prevent cracking. Meanwhile, the glass blower starts a new piece, a large vase. More blowing, more shaping. Then, while her co-worker blows air to further expand the glass and thin it out, she cools the vase's bottom with wet newspapers. This holds the cutoff point at the top. After reheating the glass to re-soften it, they stretch it, lengthening the vase. Once they finalize the shape, they use a wooden paddle to flatten the base. Now for some eye-catching decoration. Vivid colored glass coiled like taffy over the entire vase. Certain designs require cutting off a portion of the finished piece. That leaves a rough, opaque edge they must extensively grind and polish. A lemon reamer, a vase, even a mortar and pestle. A glass blower's work is clearly remarkable.